Hello everyone. So a couple of weeks ago I released a video where I talked about the fact that the majority of SPF products on the market that are supposed to contain only mineral sunscreens actually contain hidden chemical sunscreens. And the reason for that is because there are a lot of chemicals that are on the market that act exactly the same way that the approved chemical sunscreens act, but that no one has ever submitted to the FDA and so they haven't been approved as sunscreens. And so therefore, because the regulation of products in general in the cosmetics industry is so lax, people can just throw them into whatever products that they want without actually stating that they are chemical sunscreens. And so what companies tend to do is that they add these to mineral sunscreens to either jack up the SPF or so that they can put in less of the mineral sunscreens and have the products be less white and have a better texture, but nonetheless have a high enough SPF that they can get consumer attention. And that Although I don't have an issue with regard to people's choosing to use chemical sunscreens, I do think that if there's going to be chemical sunscreens that are in products, that we all should know about that. And that right now that is actually not the case. So the reason that this is interesting to me is because I have found in the past that there are a lot of mineral sunscreens that have irritated my skin just as much as the chemical sunscreens have. And that has always perplexed me and it has pretty much just kept me from wearing sunscreens sunscreen in general. But when I found out this about the unapproved chemical sunscreens being stuck into the products, I realized that the products that did irritate my skin the most in the past are ones that do have these chemical sunscreens in them uh, that are being disguised. And so that seems really important to me because I would like to be able to wear sunscreens if I can without them irritating my skin. And so this is something that I think that we should all be talking about and that should be much more in the open. So if you're interested in more details about this, then of course you can go back and look at my recent video. In that I talk about a recent study that was done, that was released uh, last summer by some dermatologists at Harvard where they did some experiments and they did demonstrate that these uh, SPF boosters actually were acting as chemical sunscreens themselves. That they were penetrating the skin, that they were being uh, absorbing the UV light, and that they were basically acting exactly the same way as the chemical sunscreens do. And that the structure of these is also extremely similar to that of the chemical sunscreens. So the most popular ones of these are butyloctyl salicylate or BOS. And this one has a chemical structure that is almost identical to octosalate. Then there's one that's also very similar to both of those, which is called tridecyl salicylate. And then there's another fairly popular one that is called ethyl ferulate. And so I have some lists of diff some different products that include those particular sunscreens, so you can take a look at those. And then you can also take a look at some lists that I have put together that of sunscreens that, at least as far as I can tell so far, do not include any sunscreen boosters. So for all of these lists, all of the foundations and all of the sunscreens that I'm listing, these are ones that do not have any chemical sunscreens that have been approved in them. If people want to use chemical sunscreens that are approved then that's perfectly fine and it's easy to identify which sunscreens those are so I haven't bothered to look at that and then these are products that also don't include a few other ingredients that I know that I am always sensitive to and that I know many other people are sensitive to as well so these include parabens and synthetic fragrance so for those sunscreens that include those ingredients I just haven't included them on these lists at all but I do think it's the case that for most most of the mainstream brands, uh, like the Copper Tone, that kind of thing, if they are labeled as mineral sunscreens, I think that it's very, very likely that they will also be including some of these sunscreen boosters in them. And then both, most of those also do include either parabens or synthetic fragrances, which is why they're not on these lists. Now, one thing that did hit me quite hard when I made these lists of sunscreens and thought about buying them to try is that sunscreens are very, very expensive. 
And especially if you are not sure which ones are going to work for you and you want to buy a whole bunch of them and try some out, uh, you can really rack up a really high bill really fast. Now, in terms of trying some sunscreens out, one thing that has been a little bit of a blessing is that right now it is the almost the beginning of April and we are going into a period where there are a lot of companies that are having some sales going on. And so I am hoping that I can use that opportunity opportunity to buy a few of these sunscreens at a lower price and then try them out. So in terms of the sales that we have going on right now, the Sephora sale is about to start. And so for uh, depending on how much you have purchased from Sephora in the past, you can get a 10 or 20 percent discount on the products from them. I recently got a coupon from Ulta for 20 percent off. And so I would guess that there are a lot of other people that have gotten a coupon for from Ulta for that amount of money off as well. And so that can be helpful. And Credo is having a sale at present where you can get between 10 or 20 percent off based on what the size of your current order is rather than what you purchased in the past. And in addition to that, uh, I have found some uh, potential sunscreens at Vitacost that interested me. And I do buy a lot of products, mostly groceries, but some other products from Vitacost as well. And they do have very frequent sales there. So my hope is that if I wait a little bit, that some of those products will also go on an even better site-wide sale. And then I also found some products at Target. And as far as I know, I haven't seen that Target's going to be having a big sale. But some of these products are reasonably priced. And and so those seem like they might be something for us to discuss as well. So since I've been making these lists for myself, I thought that I would share the lists with you in case there are any of these products that you want to pick up either uh, during this sale or uh, even if there isn't a sale. I thought that it would be interesting to discuss what I think of each of the products and which ones I think might be the best bets. So what I hope you will do is first that if you know of any sunscreens that you think should be included on these lists that I have omitted to put on so far, then I hope you will let me know about that. And I also hope that if you have tried any of these sunscreens yourself, then you will let us know in the comments what your experiences have been with them. Because my idea here is that we all can learn from one another and hopefully zero in on some of the options that might be particularly good ones. And of course, I have been a little bit bleary-eyed in terms of looking at all these ingredient lists. So if you see any errors that I may have made in terms of how I'm classifying things, then please do not hesitate to let me know about that as well. Now, one more thing that I'll talk about before we dive into this is the fact that even when we're talking about a zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, we also can talk about them in terms of whether they're nano or they're non-nano. So the nano versions of these particular minerals tend to be a lot easier to wear. They don't have as much of a white flashback. They tend to have a better texture. They're not as thick and sticky. And so a lot of people seem to find them uh, to be more fun to wear and more enjoyable. But on the other hand, these are products that are known to, first of all, be damaging to coral reefs in the same way that chemical sunscreens are damaging to coral reefs. And they also are, are suspected of potentially penetrating the body. And if they do penetrate the body, then there's questions about whether or not this is likely to be problematic. So some people feel very strongly that they don't want to be using the nano versions of these mineral sunscreens at all. And other people find that they don't think that, think that it matters so much or even that they prefer the nano versions because of the usability of the product. And in terms of whether or not the nano versions are more likely or less likely than the non-nano versions to irritate the skin, I'm not sure about that. So where I am right now, I'm not sure if I have a strong uh, preference for one of these over the other. I think that in theory, it would be good to find a non-nano sunscreen that worked really well, but whether or not I can do that, I don't know. And I think that it very well may be that there are a lot of people that watch this channel that are interested in non-nano as well as nano versions of these products. So for the time being, I'm not excluding either one of them. I'm, I'm just going to look at both of them. In addition, I tend to be somewhat sensitive to a lot of uh, non-synthetic fragrances, so to things like essential oils or things like linalool that are processed fragrances and that can be irritating, 
but uh, are not necessarily irritating for me, and I don't think they're necessarily irritating for everybody with sensitive skin. I think that these kinds of fragrances tend to be more allergy type of things, and so there's a lot of diversity in terms of which particular ones people find to be problematic. So I will list all of the products that I find, even if they have some of these natural fragrances in them. Personally, I know that I am quite allergic to rose geranium oil, and so I tend not to even bother to try products that have rose geranium oil in them, but some people do fine with rose geranium oil, so I'm not gonna exclude those. So I have just marked on these uh, lists which of these products do have processed fragrance in them. So maybe I should mention at this point that I do have affiliate links for these companies. So therefore, if you click on the links that are in the description box and then you end up making a purchase of any kind from these companies within a, a short period of time, then some of the uh, proceeds may go back to supporting this channel and, and specific to my purchasing uh, more sunscreens to try out. So I certainly am not being sponsored by anyone with this and I am just getting giving my own opinions, but if you were to participate in uh, helping out the channel by uh, clicking on the links, then I always do appreciate that. So let's talk first about Sephora and about the makeup products that are sold by Sephora that are non-nano and obviously that don't include any chemical sunscreens or sunscreen boosters. And I have tried actually both of these products. So the first one is the Say Slip Tint. And this is a foundation product. It's very light. It doesn't give very much coverage. I think that of the uh, foundation products that I have used, this one actually performs really well. I don't think that it has irritated my skin, or at least it's just been a little bit irritating, and I've been able to address that by putting on some kind of a primer underneath it. I think that the texture is pretty good. I think that it looks nice on my skin. I don't feel like it exacerbates the look of my wrinkles a lot. It doesn't have any added fragrance in it. And I think it's been, of the products that I've used, I think it's been fairly pleasant to use. Now, of course, when we're talking about foundation products, a lot of people make very, very strong emphasis about the idea that you're probably not going to be putting on enough foundation, that it will be like a quarter teaspoon of it, and so therefore you're not going to be getting the full SPF that's listed, and that you shouldn't uh, rely on this as your sole sunscreen protection. And I personally am not relying on this as my sole sunscreen protection. I am mostly relying on uh, staying out of the sun and on my uh, SPF 50 hat as my main protection, and I am viewing this as just a secondary form of protection. But I think that even if I am only getting a small amount of protection uh, over what I would get if I didn't have any sunscreen on, that this still can be a significant amount of protection if I feel like I'm really in a situation where I need it. So I am not a person that thinks, so oh, this is just pointless and you don't need to use it. I think it actually has the potential to give some reasonable sunscreen protection and that uh, while I'm doing that, this is not a bad product to wear. Now the other product here was has just been uh, included on the Sephora site and this is called uh Best Skin Days, uh, it is from Iris and Romeo. I just tried this out last week and I've been planning to do a whole video on the Iris and Romeo line. So this is a little bit of a spoiler, but I will let you know that uh, this product has rose oil in it and I am a little bit allergic to rose oil. And so that is never a great thing for my skin. I found that with this, if I put it directly on my skin, my skin was irritated, but that if I put it on over it, well, some kind of a, a light primer that it did not irritate my skin. However, this is a very, very thick product. It's like the thickest product that I have ever seen in terms of any foundation product. Uh, it's really uh, like a, a solid mousse in there. And so it goes on very thick. And I, what I found is that even if I put on a very thin layer of it, and even if I put on, if I mixed it with moisturizer and then I put it on, I still feel like it uh, is thick enough that it really uh, exacerbates the look of my wrinkles and therefore it doesn't look that great on my aging skin. Now, a lot of people do like this product. It, it does have a fine, kind of a nice texture to it. I don't think that it was bad for my skin, apart from the fact that uh, the rose 
oil I think was irritating for it, but I, I can see why some people might like it, but for me, I think that the, the issue with it both irritating my skin because of that essential oil and also the thickness of it uh, making my wrinkles look worse makes me a little bit less, just less inclined to use this even if I really need a product. Now, in terms of the other foundations that Sephora sells that seem not to have any of the sunscreen boosters in them, the only ones that I was able to find were ones by Bare Minerals. So I've not found anything on the Bare Minerals site or anywhere that I've looked that suggests that they are using non-nano forms of their minerals, and so it does seem to be that these are nano versions. So the ones that I have used here, I have used the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue product and I have done a full video on that. And so I will put the links for, for the videos that I've done on these products. I will put some links in the description box. And I found that this particular product worked really well for me, actually. And uh, it also is, I think, the, the most popular tinted moisturizer on the market. So a lot of other people do like it as well. This is not a product that includes silicone. I think it goes on my face fairly nicely. I found that of all of the mineral foundations that I have used that have sunscreen in them, that this one has actually worked pretty well for me. It really hasn't caused any significant amount of irritation, especially if I put it on over a primer. And I think it looks kind of nice. So I don't think that that is a bad product at all to consider if you want to find a SPF foundation that will give you a fair amount of coverage. I think that this one does offer a little bit more coverage of the skin than the slip tint does. So if you're looking for a foundation that is actually offering a little bit of skin coverage uh, for uh, imperfections or redness or whatever, then that might be preferable. Now last year, Bare Minerals did release a matte version of that Complexion Rescue product. I think that that is more for oily skin, and so I have not tried that one, but I have heard a few good things about it from people that have oily skin. So if that's you, then that could be worth trying. Over the years, I have fairly frequently used the Bare Minerals Original Matte Loose Powder Foundation. Uh, that doesn't offer a whole lot of SPF coverage, but it is something that you can uh, put on over makeup that you might already be using, and so that could be a good thing in some cases if you want to just add a little bit of extra SPF coverage without redoing all of your makeup. That is a product that you would think would make your skin really dry, but I have not found that to necessarily necessarily be problematic for me. It's a nice finely ground powder that I think actually works fairly well for me. It comes in a lot of different shades. I do tend to use that over a primer, otherwise it can be a little bit scratchy on my skin. And I did a video maybe six months or so ago where I was talking about the winners of the Allure Awards and uh, the Bare Minerals uh, powder foundation was one of those and so I will link to that in case you're interested in uh, looking at that particular video. But I think that this is also a, a pretty good product if you are interested in a powder foundation. Uh, they also have a product that is called Bare Pro and that is a silicone based foundation. I've only tried that on in the store. I didn't find it to be especially irritating. I didn't think that it looked great on my skin. I thought that it, it seemed to be exacerbating the look of my wrinkles more actually than the Complexion Rescue. So I never went ahead and got that, but it is another choice from that company and I think that is still on the market. And then they, last year they released this new product, which is called Bare Minerals Original Pure Serum. Uh, this has an SPF of 20, and I did buy this, and I actually haven't tried it. I just got this one, so I should be trying this one soon and making a video about it as well. So now let's talk about the sunscreens that are available at Sephora that are non-nano. So one that I did just pick up uh, in a very small uh, sample type container is called Say Sun Visor. So I think that this is something like the Say Slip Tint that I have used, except it doesn't have a tint to it. So I am looking forward to trying that. Uh, this seems like it's a, a good price, but until I realize just how small this container is, but it will be big enough for me to decide if I like it and if I want to buy a larger container of it. There's a brand new addition to the Sephora site and it is called Lion Pose Ghostbuster 100% Mineral SPF 42. That one's a little pricey, but I thought that based on the ingredient list that that one looked like it had some potential for me, so I may very well pick that up during the Sephora sale and give that one a try. 
And I have tried some First Aid Beauty products in the past, but I've never tried this sunscreen. It doesn't look like it's too bad, and so I might also consider that one. And then Supergoop Mineral Zinc Screen. This is the only uh, non-nano sunscreen that Supergoop offers that doesn't have any sunscreen, chemical sunscreens or sunscreen boosters in it. It is really expensive. It's $48. I wish I could get a sample of that. I'm wondering if I can go to the Sephora store and get them to give me a little sample of it and try it to see if it just irritates my skin because I uh, so far haven't had a lot of success with the Supergoop products and I hate to spend that much money if I'm not going to actually be able to use it. And then when we talk about the nano versions that are sold at Sephora, the same thing is the case with the Drunk Elephant uh, products that they sell. I have purchased a lot of different Drunk Elephant products recently. I've been trying to do a little video on Drunk Elephant in general. And there are a couple products from them that I really do like, but there are an awfully lot of the Drunk Elephant products that did irritate my skin. And when I look at the reviews of the two sunscreens from Drunk Elephant, they do have an awfully lot of people that suggest that their skin has been irritated by these. So I do want to try one or both of these products, but I think that if I can get the people at the Sephora store to give me a little sample in a con little tiny container and try it out that way first before investing that much money into it that that'll be a better idea. Now the Supergoop Mineral Matte Screen, that is the only product that is offered by Supergoop that does have nano a zinc in it and this one fortunately it's available in a trial size for $24 so if I can't get a sample of that one then I think that I will buy this trial size on sale and see if I can get uh, see what I think of that one because I do want to try the super good products that are appropriate I just don't want to spend a huge amount of money on them I'm also kind of interested in this Paula's Choice product. I think that uh, the reviews that I saw of that on the Sephora site, the user reviews, I didn't think that they were all that great, or I did see a lot of them that were negative. Uh, I'm not sure that it's meant for my dry skin, but I have heard enough positive things about some of the Paula's Choice products in general that I would like to give that one a try. And then the St. Jane one, that is one that does have some naturally processed fragrance in it and so I'm a little bit uh, less interested in that one because it is nano and because of the fragrance but uh, if I could get a little sample of it maybe from Credo then I might give that a try as well. Okay, so let's move on to Credo, and Credo does have an awfully lot of products in this category because they do not sell any products with chemical sunscreens in them at all, approved chemical sunscreens, and so they for, therefore they have made more of an effort to get some uh, a wide variety of mineral sunscreens and uh, SPF foundations in their lineup. So in terms of their makeup, the only makeup that I see that they offer that has SPF protection in them is using the non-nano forms of the minerals. So the first one here is Han Serum CC, and this is a product that I actually have used and that I've purchased and that I actually do really like. I did a video on this last year, so I will put a link to that video in case you're interested in it. This one has a fragrance in it, but if I'm recalling correctly, that was lavender, and my skin does not seem to be irritated by lavender, and I didn't find this one to be any more irritating than anything else that I had ever used. This, however, is a sunscreen that is based mostly on oil, so I feel like when I wear it in the summer and I'm sweating, it kind of turns into a bit of a mess, but that if I wear it during a time of the year when my skin is less likely to be sweating or if I'm going to be outside for only short periods of time, then it works a lot better for me. But I do think it's a very nice product. I think it actually looks really nice on my skin, better than most foundations, actually. And I like um, the hand company. Uh, very much also. They make a lot of affordably priced products that I think use very, very good ingredient lists, and, and this is certainly one of them. So I think that especially if you have dry skin and you're not worried about something having too much oil in it, that this is a, a product that could be worth trying. Um, Marie Veronique, I've used a number of products from them, 
and they use very high quality oils. I suspect that that's probably a foundation that is relying on some of those oils because I know that, for instance, raspberry oil has a lot of sun protection itself. And so they are using sunscreen boosters, but they're ones that are actually all natural. And so I feel really good about that. The problem with the Marie Veronique one is that it has rose geranium oil in it, and so I cannot use that. And I, obviously it's also kind of expensive. So I think that if I could use this, this might be at the top of my list because I do really like the idea of using those seed oils as a sunscreen. But uh, in this case, I, I'm not gonna be the person that's trying this, but if that sounds attractive to you, please purchase it and let us know how it goes for you. So after I finished filming the video, I took a look at the Marie Veronique website and I realized that the ingredient list there is different than the one on the Credo website and that it does not include rose geranium oil. So I was really happy about that and I did go ahead and order that product to try it out. Now I do see that they are still using immortal oil and cissus oil, so that could be an issue for some people, but I seem to have done okay with those oils in the past. And then also this RMS product, this one also has rose geranium oil in it, so that uh, is a deal killer for me. But that is a product that actually a lot of people have been giving very good reviews to. It's uh, something that you put on this the surface of your skin and that uh, gives kind of a glow, it's like a highlighter, but it does have a fair amount of SPF in it. And my understanding with regard to this is that Rosemary Swift's idea is that if you already have all of your makeup on and you want to add some more protection because it's been a while or you're unexpectedly going outside, then you can just use this to put over the top of some of your makeup uh, and give your, your face some extra protection. And I think that's a nice idea. And I think that apart from the fact that this has the rose geranium oil in it. It has a nice ingredient list. So I think that this is one that uh, if you're interested in it, I would like to hear what you think of it. But I have heard some very good things about it from other people. And then Sun Suntegrity, uh, there's a couple of different products here. And I have not tried those products yet, but I think that I might pick up one of them. Uh, Probably not both. I'd probably pick up one or the other because a lot of people do seem to be saying good things about them in the reviews and it doesn't seem to have, as far as I can recall, any natural processed fragrance in it. Now, in terms of the Credo sunscreens that don't have nanoparticles in them, uh, the ones on this list here, I, I picked up a small container of the Le Prunier Plum Screen from, their web, from the company website. They offered a very small amount. So I thought that I would start with that, but in general, I think that that probably has very good ingredients in it. So I'm a little hopeful about that. I do like plum seed oil a lot, and so my hope is that that might uh, have some really nice uh, quality skincare ingredients in it that might be helpful. I just got with my Credo points this little container of Minu, and so I am looking forward to trying this one. I think that that could be a good choice because it doesn't have any fragrance in it for me. Last year, I bought this particular product from True Botanicals. Now, this is not the product that I have listed here. This is a product that was supposed to be a foundation, so it came in different shades. And I actually kind of like this one. I thought that it worked really well for me, but that does not seem to be on the market at all right now. I don't know that they're going to bring it back. They seem to have just been offering the sunscreen, which is just a slightly tinted product, but that is not at all supposed to be serving as a foundation. So I'm not sure how different that one is. The, a lot of the ingredients do look similar. So I you know, would be interested in trying this again, although $65 to buy something that might be pretty much exactly what I already have seems to be pretty high. But if this were still on the market, I would certainly recommend it. And so therefore, I'm feeling optimistic about the True Botanicals product uh, as well, even though uh, it is on the expensive side. And then of these products that we have listed here, the only other one that I see that doesn't have a fragrance in it is the Kinship one. And that one is available in a tw for $28 in the smaller size. So I do want to get that one. And then I might try one of these others, particularly if I start to get a sense that any of them are a sunscreen that people particularly like. And then in terms of the sunscreens that are available from Credo that do have nanoparticles in them, 
All three of these have some kind of a fragrance in them, so between that and the nanoparticles, it makes me a little bit hesitant to go for these. I, I did once try, though, a product from Grown Alchemist that was like a night cream, and it was quite expensive, and it had a lot of fragrance in it, but my skin seemed to like it fine, so I'm wondering if that might be the case with this particular SPF product as well. That is the only product from Grown Alchemist that I have tried in the past, but I would be open, I may be especially to trying this one, just because I did have that previous good experience. Okay, so now let's move on to Ulta, and Ulta actually has quite a few sunscreen products, but you do have to really look hard to separate the wheat from the chaff, because there's an awfully lot of them there that do have chemical sunscreens and sunscreen boosters in them. So the first two products that we have here on the foundation product page with the non-nano uh, sunscreens in them uh, are two sunscreens that I think are quite similar to one another. So one is called Beauty Counter Dew Skin, and one is the Jane Iredale Dream Tint. So both of these have a fairly low SPF level to them. Both of these do have a natural fragrance type ingredients in them. They're about the same price. Uh, I think that they perform fairly well in terms of the look that they give. They give a light coverage, but not too light. It's not like invisible coverage. You will get a little bit of coverage from this. And I do think that both of these products are pretty popular. I found that uh, I could wear these products if I did put them over some kind of a primer. I do think that the fragrances in them were a little bit irritating, but all in all, these are uh, products that I think could work out for some people and that I would be willing to wear uh, if that was what I had in stock. I actually did buy a new container of this Beauty Counter one from the Ulta website. They happen to have it as a half price for their 21 Days of Beauty that just ended. So I did pick up a new one in this just to uh, make sure I had a fresh bottle of it to try out again. But all in all, I, if you're looking for something that doesn't have a huge amount of coverage in it and is gonna perform fairly close to what a regular foundation would perform, I think that these are possibilities. Now, Jane Iredale does have another SPF uh, foundation that is called the Glow Time Pro BB Cream. This has a slightly higher SPF of 25, and this actually is, I think, one of the lowest uh, rated products on the entire Ulta site. So, and like those people, I found this to be uh, not a very enjoyable product to use. I found it to be quite thick and did not make my skin look that great. But I realized later on that the, this really, there's a reason for that because this does have a fair amount of uh, just mineral sunscreen in it. So it is offering a fair amount of coverage. It's offering a fair amount of sun protection. And if I take those things into consideration, uh, maybe this one really, I was being a little too hard on it because it is hard to make an all mineral foundation with a higher SPF that is going to look nice and that's not going to be like, and that is going to offer you some coverage as well. And this also did not irritate my skin as at least, uh, or at least it irritated my skin as little as any other sunscreens ever have. So I think that uh, this is not necessarily one that you should completely exclude from the list, but I will say that if you're looking for a beautifully performing foundation, that this is probably not going to be it. And then there's also a product by Juice Beauty that has an SPF of 30, and that one does have some fragrance in it. I have tried a few other products from Juice Beauty, including one of their foundations that did not have sunscreen in it. I haven't been all that impressed with anything that I've tried from that company, so I'm not really expecting to be all that impressed with this particular foundation and the fact that it has a fragrance in it makes me less inclined to use it as well. Then in terms of the Nano foundations, uh, of course, Ulta has all those same Bare Minerals products. Another product that I have tried is the Honest Beauty Cream that is mentioned here. This is a product that doesn't include fragrance. I think that it looked nice on my skin. I did a full video on that last year, and so if you're interested in that product, you can take a look at it. But in general, I've had very good luck with pretty much everything from the Honest Beauty line. I think it's performed well for me. And I think this is a product that's uh, been particularly nice, uh, for, especially for the price point. And I've been thinking about the Tarte BB Blur product. I think that's available at Sephora also. I'll have to go back and check. 
And that is a product that I think it's also available in a uh, small size. And so I am going to take a look at that. Hopefully I can get that on sale uh, and just try it out briefly. The one with that is the Amazonian clay one that has retinol palmitate in it, which is a form of retinol. That I have decided just not to use retinol, both because retinol does seem to irritate my skin, and also because I don't really want my skin to become more sensitive to the sun, because that seems to be counterproductive in terms of taking care of my skin. So I'm not going to get that one, but some people were interested in that one. And then there's this Shape Tape Cloud product uh, that could be another alternative. Now, in terms of the sunscreens from Ulta that are non-nano, I am in general a pretty big fan of Coco Kind. I've tried really everything from Coco Kind except for this sunscreen, and I've had pretty good luck with all of it. I think that for the prices that they are charging, they tend to have quite good ingredients and that the things have performed well for my skin. So I'm a little bit interested in uh, picking that one up, and I probably will do that and try it uh, fairly soon. Uh, they have the first aid one there. They have the kinship one, so I'll probably try that one. This Live Tinted product, this is one that I did pick up, again, during the Ulta sale, so I got it for half price, so I thought that it was worth experimenting for that, so we will see if I like this particular product. Uh, the Dune Mineral Melt, I don't know anything about that one except for what I've read on, their, on the Ulta website, so if anyone knows anything about that one, I would like to know something about that. And then again, I'm interested in the First Aid Beauty one, maybe, and the Kinship one I probably will pick up either from Credo or from Ulta. So of the nano sunscreens that are available from Ulta, I'm actually kind of interested in this Neutrogena one. That one seems to get pretty good reviews. That one comes in several different tints, so it's kind of like a foundation. And this is the only Neutrogena product that looks like it would be appropriate. So I'm happy that they've made something for really sensitive skin. So I probably will try that one. That's not very expensive. And the other ones here, I'm not sure about. I, At least I'm not seeing it, that any of them have fragrance in them, or most of them do not, except for the Kula one. So I might be interested in picking up one of these other ones. Uh, so if anyone has any suggestions about which ones might be best, then please let me know about that. That could be a big help. Now on the Target website, they have some of the same products that we've seen before. The Juice Beauty one, which I think has fragrance in it, and the Honest CCC cream, which, I'm a big, which I think is a good possibility. And then for the sunscreens from Target, uh, first of all, they have some from Badger, and Badger is one of the few sunscreen lines that I have seen where none of the products either seem to have any kind of um, sunscreens that are chemical sunscreens or sunscreen boosters in them. So, and they, they also are non-nano. So I think that uh, most of the time you have to be really careful and spend a lot of time reading the labels and making sure that you're getting what you think you're getting. But I think with Badger, it's fairly safe. Some of those products, I think, do have some uh, natural fragrances in them. But in terms of avoiding chemical sunscreens, I think that Badger is going to allow you to do that efficiently. And then they have some of the products that I brought up before, the Coco Kind one, the First Aid one, the Live Tinted one. Uh, Naked Sundays, uh, that's a possibility that I've been thinking about. And then the Native Mineral Sunscreen. Uh, Native seems to be a brand that's becoming more popular. It's certainly reasonably priced. So I think I may spend some more time reading some of those reviews and seeing if that one is worth trying. And then there's a couple of products here that are uh, nano products. I've heard a little bit about both of these lines, the Australian Gold and the Sunbum line, but I don't know if they would be worth picking up or not. And then from Vitacost, uh, Pacifica is a, a company that makes a product called Kind Tint, which I actually think is quite a nice little skin tint, uh, especially because it's a really reasonable price. So that makes me a little bit interested in the uh, product that uh, is from Pacifica that I have listed here. It has only a small amount of sunscreen in it, but I think it could be worth trying anyway. It doesn't seem to be real expensive. And then Vitacost has some Badger products, and they also have some products that are from a company called Stream to See. 
And strange to see as a company that if anybody has been uh, opposed to the idea of putting these sunscreen boosters in sunscreen type products, it is strange to see. That is actually the reason that they started this company. The person that started this company was someone that was really determined that they were not going to include any chemical sunscreens at all. She actually has her own uh, production facility and she makes sunscreens for other companies, but only if they don't have any of the sunscreen boosters in them. So I think that that's very interesting. In one of the articles, she said that uh, her nickname for BOS is that it's just BS. And I think that uh, I'm starting to agree with her about a lot of this and about the fact that uh, it's good to have another company that you can really uh, be sure is not going to have any of these uh, sunscreens uh, boosters in them uh, and that you can just buy whatever you feel like buying without having to read the ingredient list. So that makes me want to buy at least one product from this company, but I'll probably end up buying more than one. And then they have a few of these other products that I mentioned before as well, the Coca Kind, the Native, and, uh, and of course the Badger ones. And then they also have a few products that are nano uh, versions. And again, I'm not quite sure if uh, those are worth trying, but I think I may need to read some more reviews and decide which ones of them sound the best. So if you've heard anything about these products or if you've tried them, then please let me know what you think. And then finally are a few more sunscreens, uh, kind of a hodgepodge of things that I would have to buy from other uh, websites. So the first one is from a company called Anne Marie, and this is a really all natural type of a company. And Mark Hyman, who is, uh, was associated with the Cleveland Clinic uh, Functional Medicine uh, division, he uh, is a spokesperson for that company. And I have tried a number of their products, and I think that they are usually quite expensive, but they seem not to have irritated my skin, so I've been really happy about that. Even when they've included some fragrance-type ingredients in them, they've all been fine for my skin. So my hope is that this Anne Marie Sun Love product would be okay also. And I did place an order for that, so I will keep my fingers crossed that that will work out. Uh, Badger, again, I think you can buy anything from the Badger website or anywhere else that you see Badger products, and at least it shouldn't have any chemical sunscreens in it. Beauty Counter makes a number of products that are not for sale on Ulta and that you can get through their website. Now one of their products, this one, which is in a can and comes out in a foam, this one does have BOS in it. But this is the only product that I could find on the Beauty Counter website that does have any chemical sunscreens or sunscreen boosters in them. A couple of these products, however, do have um, fragrances in them, and I don't do all that well with most of Beauty Counter's fragrances, but I think that I would like to pick up the Beauty Counter Counter Sun Daily Sheer Defense for Face. It's a little bit expensive, but typically a few times a year Beauty Counter will have a sale that's maybe 20% off or 15% off, and so I usually buy some things from Beauty Counter at those sales, so probably I will buy that product uh, at a discount when it does go on sale. Now, Chantecaille is a company that I've had really mixed experiences with. A lot of the products that are sold by Chantecaille I would not consider to be clean beauty at all. Quite the contrary. But I have done okay with this foundation of theirs, which is from Japan. And I think that the sunscreen that they, the tinted uh, sunscreen that they sell, it's also from Japan, so it's probably from this same factory. And for that reason, I'm a little bit interested in that. Now, it doesn't have much sunscreen in it, and uh, it is really expensive. And so I, uh, th those are definitely good reasons to not bother with this one at all. But because I like this foundation, I might pick up that sunscreen also. Usually Chantecaille has one sale per year. It might be in like May. And so maybe I will wait for that sale and then buy that sunscreen then. And then Necessary is actually one of my favorite companies. I bought almost everything from them, and I've had really good experiences with all of it. Uh, they're mostly selling body care products, but I think that all of them have been really good for me. And they have one sunscreen that I think it might be new this year, and it is supposed to be a body sunscreen, but some people say that they do use it on the face. And even if it's just one that can be used on the body, I'm interested in it for that reason as well. Now, I was hoping that it would be for sale 
either at Creta or Sephora, but so far I'm not seeing it on those sites. Once in a while, Necessary will have a, site, a sale on their own site, so I probably will postpone buying that one a little bit with the hope that I can get it on sale somewhere. But I certainly intend to pick that one up because I would be surprised based on my other good experiences with the Necessary products if that one were not a good product for me. And then Stream to See, they have a whole bunch of different sunscreens on their website, so I probably will spend some more time on that website and decide which one or which ones of those would be best for me. And then finally, I'm a, also a big fan of Typology, which is a French skincare company. I actually did a full a video on Typology and the many different products from them that I have tried. And they have one sunscreen product and uh, it does seem to get fairly good reviews on the site and the ingredients look like they might be fine. And so I did buy one of that one and so I'm waiting for that to be arriving from France and then I will give that a try and I will keep my fingers crossed for that one as well. And by the way, a couple of times I have talked in this video about the idea that I wear a primer under these sunscreens, so I thought I would talk a little bit about that. You know, I've tried a variety of different primers, including some primers that are, that are more traditional and being sold as primers. But what I tend to find is that even something that is very light and that is mostly skincare, but that has a little bit of priming to it, can be helpful with this. So for instance, this new Ilia product, which is called the Base Face Milk, this is a skincare product that uh, doesn't have a lot of oil in it, and it does have some things like sodium hyaluronate in it, so it kind of provides a little bit of a barrier on my skin, but it certainly isn't something that's uh, very heavy. But nonetheless, what I have found is that if I put this down first, and then if I put something like the Iris and Romeo product over it, that my skin tends to be much, much less irritated than if I don't put this stuff down first. So I think that when I say that I put down a primer, it doesn't have to be anything that is uh, silicone-y. It doesn't have to be, you know, totally covering up my skin and making it seem uh, really fake and hard to get off. I think that just something that provides a little bit of a barrier for some of these products can be really helpful, at least for me. So thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. And as I say, if you've tried any of these products that I have brought up, then please let me know what you, your experiences with them have been. That would be super helpful. In addition, if there are products that you would like for me to try especially, then let me know what those are. Or if there are products that uh, you want to add to my list, then please let me know about that as well. And also, please do let me know if which products you buy and what your experiences with them are. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, then I hope you will go ahead and do that. And Coco and I love you very much. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.